Hello, welcome to our workshop on how to get started with GX Cloud and Postgres. I'm Joshua Timberman, and I'm a senior developer advocate here at Great Expectations. I will be your guide in this workshop. First off, let's talk about GX Cloud. GX Cloud is our hosted platform that enables you to manage the full lifecycle of data quality so your teams can trust the data your organization uses. Within the GX Cloud UI, you have access to quickly create expectations for data sources that enable teams to build shared understanding and get a detailed view of them validated in real time. Expectations are readable, plain language test names that enable stakeholders to create consensus about data without writing code. You can think of expectations like unit tests for your data. All this enables collaboration across teams that care about the quality of the data as they can view test results and history, as well as monitor results and get alerted if changes in data sources cause any problems. For example, if you have broken dashboards or reports. So what are we going to accomplish in this workshop? Well, first, we're going to discuss the key concepts of Great Expectations and GX Cloud. Then we'll walk through how to connect a GX Cloud to a Postgres data source. Then we will create some expectations for our sample database. Finally, We'll wrap up by validating these expectations and reviewing the results. If you registered for one of our live workshops, the only prerequisite you have is that you would have instructions to create a GX Cloud account. If you don't have an account, don't fret, you can create that at any time. The workshop is designed with the latest version of GX Cloud. On July 30th, we made some changes to simplify the onboarding process so that we can focus on creating expectations right away. Before we get to the hands-on portion of the, of the workshop, I'd like to introduce the main components of Great Expectations and GX Cloud. First off, everyone needs to have a data source. This is the database or data warehouse that contains your organization's data. For example, this could be a Snowflake instance or a Postgres database. For this workshop, we have a sample Postgres database. Next, we have data asset. This is a collection of records within the data source. That is a table, schema, or data frame. For this workshop, our Postgres database has a table of New York City taxicab ride data. Third, we have expectations. These are the verifiable assertions about your data. For example, in a taxi ride, we can expect that the passenger column has a value of one or greater, indicating that the taxi ride has passengers, or that the price for the trip is a, floating, is a positive floating point number. That is, that the passenger has paid for their trip. We'll look at expectations in more detail during the hands-on portion. Finally, in GX, we have a validation, which is the mechanism for applying expectations against a selection of records in the data asset. Now, I'm about to switch over to the hands-on portion of this workshop. I do encourage you to follow along on your own machine, so feel free to pause this video as you need. If you need more help, you can find us in the Great Expectations community Slack or on our discourse mailing list. Take your time and feel free to explore the UI as you work through the examples. Finally, we will provide these workshop materials on GitHub as a public repository. In fact, I'm going to show you where that is now because we're probably going to want to copy and paste the connection stream for the Postgres data source. So first we'll open up the GitHub repository. This is on github.com slash great expectations labs slash workshops. So if we view this repository, we can see it's in the great expectations labs organization under the workshops repository. We'll go ahead and click on get started with GX cloud and Postgres here. And we'll scroll down to the connection string. So as we can see, this is a quite a long connection string because we have our, our example user and password here. But the, the main thing is that we have this long uh, randomly generated string because we're using an AWS RDS instance for this example. Next, we'll open up GX Cloud. So once we go to app.gradexpectations.io, we will be able to log into GX Cloud. Here I'm logged in and it's, it is prompting me to connect a data source to get started. If you're logging into GX Cloud for the first time, you may be prompted with a survey. Go ahead and pause this video, fill that out, and come right back. 
Okay, thank you. We'll now continue on with connecting our data source to, Postgre to a PostgreSQL database. So we already have a user in our PostgreSQL database that's part of that connection string. So we're gonna click the, I have created a GX Cloud user with access per permissions. And then we'll name the data source. We'll call this NYC Taxi Cab Data. And then we will add the connection string. As we can see, this is the connection string that we copied from the workshop GitHub example. We'll connect to that. When we connect, GX Cloud automatically detects that we have a table. So we're gonna go ahead and select the NYC taxi data table. And now we have a data asset. So if we click on this data asset, we can see that it's going to profile the data to get the column names and their types. And then from here, we're going to create a new expectation. We expect in our database that every taxi ride is going to have a vendor who provided that ride. So we're going to look for uh, an expectation to detect if a column value is null. As we can see from the expectation picker, there's a lot of different expectations that we have available to us. So for, from here, we'll type in null into the search box. We'll get this fuzzy search that we'll find that we can expect column values to be null or we can expect column values to not be null. So we'll use that one. And then we will use the vendor ID column and we, we will note for our other collaborative users within our organization that we expect taxi rides to have a vendor provided the ride. Okay, so now we have documented this, and this is what I was talking about where we can collaborate with other users within our organization. So we can document what our expectations are and why. We can also fill this out with a lot more information. We can expand this, right? more descriptive uh, information about this particular expectation. But this will suffice for now. So let's go ahead and save this. And then from here, we have on, on the data asset view, we have our expectations and then we have our validations. We don't have any validations yet. So let's go ahead and validate our expectations. And we'll see that the results have come back and we have a 100% success rate because all of the vendor or all the values in the vendor ID column are not null. So that's, that's all well and good. Let's take a look at another expectation. So let's create a new expectation. And for this expectation, we're going to expect that uh, all of the taxi rides have a passenger count that is no more than four because taxi cabs have four seats for passengers. So let's look for a maximum. So we expect the column maximum value to be between. So we're gonna select it for our column, the passenger count column, and then we'll input four in our max value. Taxi cabs have four seats. All right, we'll save this. And then we'll click on validate again. And we will see on the validation tab, we have the results and we can see that we have a failing expectation. So what we what we have here is a validation history that, ex, that we can expand and we can see that the observed value is six. Ah, yes, of course. Some taxi cabs in New York City may be taxi vans, so they can hold up to six passengers. So let's go ahead and correct this expectation. So we'll go into our expectations tab We'll go to the passenger count. We'll edit this expectation. And then we'll change the max value to six. And we'll continue writing our documentation as taxi cabs have four seats, but taxi vans have six. So let's go ahead and save this. And then we'll run our validation again. We can click see results. And we can see that we do in fact meet all of our expectations here. So this is corrected. We can see our validation history that a minute ago it failed and less than a minute ago it passed. 
So you may be wondering if there's an easier way other than having to go and review all of the data in your data store for certain things like the observed values here. And as a matter of fact, there is. If we go back to the overview tab for our, ta our taxi data asset, we can click this profile data button and that will read the database and fetch the minimum, maximum, median values and also the percentage of values that are null. So we can see that from here we have passenger count and the max value is in fact six. So if we wanted to create an expectation for our passenger count using this data, it'll be much easier to do so. So if we click on new expectation, we'll select that max again, expect column maximum to be between. And now when we click on passenger count, we'll see that the max value gets populated automatically. So we know that taxi cabs have four seats, but vans have six, and we got this from profiling the data. So we'll go ahead and save this. Then we'll go ahead and validate. We can view the results, and we can see the passenger count maximum value must be six, observed value six, validation history is all good, and that's it. We have successfully validated our expectations for our data set. We can also view within here all of our runs and see that we have some graph over time that shows the uh, if anything changed or if anything observed is different or if we had failures, we get this graph within our view of our validations. Now, if we go back to our expectations tab, we also, you may also have noticed that we have this next run today at 4 p.m. Mountain Time. This is our validation schedule. So we can actually set up a schedule for our validations. So for example, if we were getting new data on a regular basis, we could make sure that we're scanning that new data when we expect to get that added into our data store. So from here, we can click on the edit button and then we can edit this and we can change the frequency, we can change the start time, and then we save the results and it will uh, run that repeatedly over time on that schedule. We can go view the logs and see the history of that. And then we can also go into the validations and see uh, all the runs that have occurred. And that concludes the hands-on portion of the workshop. So in this workshop, we explained key grid expectations and GX Cloud concepts. We had an overview of the GX Cloud UI. We set up a Postgres data store and data asset. Then we created expectations within GX Cloud and we ran validations and reviewed those results. We also profiled the data to see that we can get some information about the data store before we create any expectations. So it makes it easier to work with our expectations in the future. So what's next? So from here, you can take what you've learned and you can connect to your own Postgres instance using your own connection string. You can try creating your own expectations in GX Cloud. Uh, you can also work with this example database and get some ideas on how you might use that for your own data store. You can also invite others to work with you in your GX Cloud organization. You can use the Great Expectations Python API to create GX Cloud entities and integrate those with GX Cloud in your own orchestrator or CI pipeline or something similar. We invite you to explore our documentation, which is docs.greatexpectations.io slash docs slash cloud. And that will get you on your way to learning more about great expectations. Again, the workshop materials are also available at github.com slash great expectations labs slash workshops. You can also find out about our other workshops that are there. Currently, we have 
uh, get started with GX Cloud and Snowflake, and of course, this workshop on GX Cloud and Postgres. If you need help using GX Cloud, you can reach out on our discourse and get help from GX employees and community members. That's at discourse.greatexpectations.io. And if you find a bug or you're getting an error in GX Cloud or need more focused support, please email support at greatexpectations.io to open up a support ticket in our Zendesk system. Thank you and have a great day.